What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, retired legendary, iconic Hall of Fame superstar boxer, Roy Jones Jr., who is now a trainer of many fighters. Uh, Roy Jones is passing on the knowledge that he possesses. With that said, Roy Jones, he weighed in on a highly anticipated upcoming Undisputed showdown that's scheduled to take place June 4th in the United States, June 5th in Australia, between undefeated WBC lightweight world champion, American superstar boxer Devin the Dream Haney, who is 27 wins, no loss, and no draw, 15 wins by way of knockout, 23 years of age, 5 foot 9 with a 72 inch arm reach. He'll be taking on undefeated, newly crowned, unified, lightweight world champion, Australian star boxer. George Cambosis Jr., who is 20 wins, no loss, and no draw, 10 wins by way of knockout. George Cambosis Jr. is 28 years of age, 5 foot 9, with a 68 inch arm reach. With that said, Roy Jones said it's a tough fight. And the reason that he says it's a tough fight, he's leaning towards Devin Haney. He said Devin Haney uh, should win the fight. Uh, but Roy Jones, he stated that it, it's a tough fight because Devin Haney has to travel across seas and he stated that we don't do well as far as decision goes when we go across seas okay if you don't know uh, back in 1988 in the olympics and the amateurs roy jones he finished with a silver medal roy jones should have been an olympic gold medal it was one of the most controversial decisions in the history of the sport of boxing okay uh, roy jones didn't get the nod and many people felt like Roy Jones should have gotten a nod, okay? Uh, and he's not the first, and he wasn't the last, okay? Uh, the last time we had an Olympic uh, gold medalist was Andre S.O.G. Ward. But uh, there's plenty of fighters that in the Olympics, you know, uh, suffered losses, okay? Just uh, eight years later, okay, eight short years later, we had... Legendary, retired, Hall of Fame, iconic superstar boxer Floyd Mayweather Jr. In the 1996 Olympics, uh, Floyd Mayweather, he lost uh, a decision. And once again, okay, another historic bad decision in Bulgaria. And Floyd Mayweather didn't get the nod when he clearly should have been an Olympic gold medalist. Okay, uh, it was heartbreaking to say the least. You know, uh, he didn't get the nod. He didn't get the, the decision. And, uh, you know, um, he clearly should have gotten the nod in that fight. OK, uh, so Floyd Mayweather, uh, uh, it was in the bronze match and he won the bronze, you know, where you had um, uh, Roy Jones win the silver. So uh, but both guys, you know, uh, should have gotten a nod in the Olympics across seas. Uh, and so historically, you know, uh, they turned out to be legendary icon hall of fame professionals but you know the decisions over across seas when you leave outside of the united states is shaky okay uh most recently we had another legendary fighter who's not american but another legendary fighter an eight division world champion iconic filipino superstar boxer manny pac-man pacquiao he traveled across seas uh and he took on jeff horn back in um uh July of 2017 and he lost a unanimous decision when once again this was a fight where most people felt like Manny Pacquiao should have gotten a nod in that fight okay uh, a well-renowned trainer turned colorful analyst boxing pundit Teddy Atlas who's a well uh you know retired Hall of Fame trainer he went on an absolute rant after the decision July of 2017 uh, that favorite Jeff Horn in Australia. He went on an absolute rant. Uh, he was uh, huge, highly disappointed, you know, um, and he didn't work for ESPN much longer after that, Teddy Atlas. Uh, he didn't, uh, he went and started his own podcast and things of that nature. So this is not the first time that, you know, we have uh, fighters go overseas and not get the nod. So Roy Jones is saying that, uh, you know, it, it makes for a tough fight because, uh, Devin Haney is going to have to truly, truly separate himself in this equation uh, to get the nod because we know the decisions over there are not favorable to us. Not to mention, 
George Cambosis Jr. History is on the side. He's the first uh, unified Australian world champion that's going to uh, into an opportunity to fight for undisputed. Okay, uh, and so you know, um, obviously George Cambosis Jr. is going to be the favorite. Uh, obviously, Devin Haney is going to be you know uh, not well received. Okay, uh, and you know Devin Haney's style. He's a pure boxer. Uh, he's very slick. Uh, he's technically sound, you know, uh, but he's not considered to be the biggest puncher in the world. Neither is George Cambosis Jr. Okay, so uh, many people have expressed their concerns. You even had uh, Teddy Atlas, of course, he expressed his concerns. Many people, uh, many of Devin Haney's peers, they expressed their concerns uh, with Devin Haney having to go overseas for this event uh, and get a fair shake. So Roy Jones, he stated that, uh, this is a difficult fight, more so because Devin Haney is going overseas, okay? There's two separate interviews you can see, uh, one in which he said he's worried about uh, Devin Haney going over there, and the other interview, he says that, you know, um, it's a huge concern because uh, he goes into a little more debt that, you know, you just don't, we just, it just haven't been in favor for uh, um, American United States athletes to go overseas in the sport of boxing, and get fair shakes. Now we did have guys like uh, Terence Crawford go over. He fought Ricky Burns over in uh, the UK. You know uh, he got the nod. You know uh, Errol Spence he fought Kell Brook in the UK, but he he stopped Kell Brook. So uh, there was no decision to be had. Uh, there wasn't a, a situation where they could have took it from uh, Errol Spence Jr. Now, uh, granted, now just keep in mind. Uh, when you look at those scorecards going into the stoppage, there was a judge that had Kell Brook up on the scorecards, okay? Uh, so, you know, um, who knows how that would have played out, you know, uh, should um, Errol Spence not have stopped Kell Brook in the 11th round of their fight, and that fight actually went to, you know, uh, a decision on the cards. Who knows what the outcome would have been at that point in time, okay? Nobody knows. And that's concerning, okay? Um, but again, uh, I believe that there's so much attention on uh, there being a fair shake given to Devin Haney that I believe there's going to be a lot of pressure on the judges to do the right thing. Uh, I believe there's going to be a lot of pressure on everybody in the total to do the right thing, okay? Um, I do believe that, you know, uh, you know, Devin Haney is the better skilled, technically sound bo boxer, I do think he's uh, the better talent, okay? But George Cambosis Jr. is nobody's walk in the park, okay? He upset and shocked the world when he defeated former unified lightweight world champion superstar boxer Teofimo Lopez. He dropped Teofimo Lopez. He weathered the storm. He was aggressive. He got dropped. He faced adversity in the 10th round. He got up. He won the 11th and 12th round, the money rounds, okay? Uh, so he's definitely a talented, fast fighter. Uh, he does have quick hands. Uh, he has respectively quick feet, not a big puncher, you know, um, but he's very active. Um, he beat world champions like Lee Selby. He beat um, uh, Mickey Bay. So, you know, he's experienced as well. Uh, and, you know, this is a homecoming fight, you know, uh, and he's come over here and he's gotten a fair shake. OK, uh, nobody took it from him. Uh, there was no fights where people felt like George Cambosis, even a Mickey Bay fight for George Cambosis uh, was still a split decision, a close fight. Um, but I believe the right man won that night. Okay. Um, and so with that said, you know, uh, I do believe that, uh, De Devin Haney is going to get a fair shake. Okay. I do believe that Devin Haney, you know, um, is not going to have to, you know, um, be concerned, uh, uh, with, you know, um, the judges. Now, obviously it's, it's always a thought and it always has to be a process, but I do believe that, there's so much attention on Devin Haney not getting a fair shake that if Devin Haney clearly wins this fight uh, and this not even close or it's a close fight, but you clearly see Devin Haney should get the nod. I do believe there'll be a judge that favors George Cambosis, but I do believe Devin Haney will get the nod and get the victory. OK. Uh, and on top of that, Devin Haney recently expressed that you know, uh, they going to want to have neutral judges as much as possible. OK, um, which raises a lot of attention to the situation 
uh, as well. The fact that they're asking for neutral judges, okay? Uh, most recently, also another fight, you have Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Um, they are making sure that, you know, the judges, they're choosing the correct judges, so there's neutral judges there. Uh, you look at the situation most recently with Jack Catterall and Josh Taylor, undefeated, undisputed, uh, junior welterweight world champion, British superstar boxer. Many people thought that Jack Catterall won the fight and he didn't get the nod, okay? Uh, Josh Taylor got the nod and people was very unhappy uh, and expressed their displeasure with the, the, the uh, decision on the part of the judges. And uh, to the point where Josh Taylor, he received a lot of unwarranted uh, um, comments on his social media and things of that nature. And to the point where he said that he can see how the fans were upset and he could see that, you know, uh, if fans favored Jack Catterall, but he also thought he won the fight. But, you know, uh, since that fight took place, Tyson Fury and Dillian White fight is scheduled to take place April 23rd. They're making sure they have the proper judges in place because of that decision. So I believe that right now, the uh, attention on the judges making the right decision is so high, okay? Uh, and it's so, uh, um, you know, um, on display that I don't believe that Devin Haney is going to get an unfair shake should he be victorious. I think he's going to get the right nod. But uh, Roy Jones Jr. is well in his rights to believe that and be concerned as well as Teddy Atlas and many of Devin Haney's peers. Uh, but again, I think Devin Haney's talent is going to be on display. I don't think he's going to leave it up to, you know, uh, um, uh, for the judges to say they're giving him a benefit of the doubt. I think he's going not going to leave it up to chance. Uh, maybe get a stoppage, maybe he don't. Maybe get a knockout, maybe he don't. Uh, but I think it'll be such a decisive one-sided victory uh, and clear, decisive victory in favor of Devin Haney that they won't have a choice but to give him the nod. Now, the thing about it is he has to have an imme immediate instant rematch with George Cambosis once again in Australia. That's what's tricky about this entire equation. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section, let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notification. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.